Soros, Druckenmiller, Shumway, Icon, they're all big league hedge fund managers who shuttered their doors to outside investors, focusing instead on managing their own money in a so-called single-family office. Stan Druckenmiller says he did it because he couldn't deliver the same returns any longer, but there's something else going on, a loophole in rules under the new Dodd-Frank Financial Reform Act. Here to tell us about it is Curtis Stefanik. He advises and assists hedge fund managers as counsel at SR, SNR Denton. Curtis, tell us what's going on here. Why are guys like George Soros, giants of the industry, saying... I don't want any part of this game any longer. Well, uh, I think that George Soros is a, is a good example of a very successful fund manager who has enough of his own money now. Uh, he's 80 years old. He doesn't need to be bothered in many respects with the financial markets or financial regulation for that matter. Uh, what the Dodd-Frank Act did was uh, it removed a popular exemption for hedge fund managers, which was the private client rule, and replaced it with a series of more limited exemptions. And what the SEC is saying is uh, to the extent you, uh, uh, you, you, you're having a limited audience, in this case family members, very high net worth individuals, or a limited number of private funds, the, we're not so concerned about... so-called sophisticated about, investor. That's right. We're not definition. concerned about regulating you. And a lot of people have seized on the family office exemption as, uh, as a means of managing their own money without needing to be subject to government but why regulation. why escape regulation? What do these hedge funds have to hide? Well, I think there's an institutional bias against government regulation. We saw it when the Dodd-Frank Act was being passed. Uh, we've seen it since. We've seen a lot of press about uh, big bad Washington coming in and regulating the hedge fund industry. Uh, and, and the fact of the matter is uh, most players in the hedge fund space aren't used to being having to tell people what it is they're doing. That's they don't it, uh, like to have to say what it is they're doing. Uh, on John Stewart, The Daily Show, they actually had a guy dressed up as the Dodd-Frank Bill, and he had, like, tire marks, he had a butcher's knife in the back, uh, and he, you know, part of his song, he actually had a song, believe it or not, and he was like, 238 motions, only 38 written. And so they did this sketch, but it was basically how Dodd-Frank has no teeth. Well, Dodd-Frank is getting beaten up in the press, but the, the fact of the matter is that for investment managers, it's here to stay. and. I think it becomes a question for, for investment managers of how much uh, money they need from outside sources. Are they, are they, are, do they need clients? When you talk to your clients, the hedge fund managers, mm -hmm. how do they feel about this? Is this an acceptable trade-off? On the one hand, giving up the risks that you face in regulation and the constraints it may impose on your business, but in turn, giving up the management fee, the performance fee, just to kind of make it on your own. That's exactly right. Well, you know, Dodd-Frank uh, provides that family offices are exempt from all registration under the Act. So it's a pretty big plus not to be a family office. But, you know, most managers need, need the money. They need the clients. And it's very, very complicated. Even where uh, you can separate clients uh, from a family office outfit, uh, in many instances, these families have multifamily offices, have old, long-standing relationships, and people aren't willing or able to sever those relationships. Does it lead to some sort of displacement, though, in the hedge fund industry to have some family funds that are so rich, they can basically can do what they want, move markets, and then you have these younger, arguably smaller firms that are trying to raise money that have to fight with the SEC when they don't even have as much infrastructure? You know, that's, that's, a, that's a very good point, and a lot of press has been given to this, you know, is, is, is Dodd-Frank favoring the large hedge fund managers over the worse. small ones? But, you know, this goes back to the beginning of the securities laws in the United States that were passed in the wake of the, uh, you know, the 29 crash. It says, well, who needs the protection of the U.S. securities laws? Well, what about the investors themselves? What about the pension funds and the endowments that for years earned spectacular returns from the likes of Soros and Druckenmiller, sometimes 30 percent or more on average annually? they no longer get to benefit from the management expertise that these guys bring. That's right. Well, they've had a good run, though, haven't they? I mean, most, people, most people wish they could have been in on it for 30 years and then get out. Uh, I, I, think that, uh, I think that a lot of those uh, you know, clients will have to clearly find new ways to make their returns. It's, un it's unfortunate for them, but it is a difficult market, whatever reason people give for getting out of the, the hedge fund business right now. Is it now. a trend? Are we going to see more of this? I think we'll see some of it. I, I don't think we're going to 
see a, a great deal of it because not everyone is in the position of being able to remove those uh, you know, those players from their their business. And in, in Soros's case, he's giving back a billion dollars in a twenty one billion dollar fund. So that's mm -hmm. a small proportion. Indeed, Curtis, good to see you here. <laughs> Thank Thanks you so, so much, much. Thanks, Curtis. Curtis Stefanik of SNR Denton uh, with us talking about the trend: hedge funds turning into single family offices, escaping regulation.